All right, if you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And we're going to begin reading in the first verse. The Gospel of John chapter 10, in the first verse, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. He calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And he putteth forth his own sheep, and he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for an opportunity to be in your house tonight. Lord, we come with it, we come to you with a heavy heart, Lord, that you would be with the Lackey family tonight, Lord, that you would give Brother Terry strength, Lord. We pray for Gwen and Haley and Justin, Lord, that you would strengthen them in a special way. Uh, we pray that Millie would be comfortable, Lord, Lord, that she would have no pain. Uh, we pray for all her sisters and brothers, Lord, that you would be with them as well. Uh, comfort that family in this hard time. We pray for our mother even tonight there in the hospital, Lord, that you would touch her, that you would heal that leg, Lord, and that she wouldn't even need anything else. And we pray these things in the sweet, the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, Sometimes I don't know that they're taken right in text because we tend to pay a lot of attention to chapter and verse when it originally didn't appear that way. But to really get the full effect, you have to know who he was speaking to at this break. And he was addressing the Pharisees and Sadducees. They were the religious elite of the day. Supposedly they knew more about the Word of God than anybody else. And if, the, if you had a question, they had an answer. And he's addressing them. And really, their lack of understanding concerning the truth of the Word of God. And so he begins in the first verse, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, specifically truly, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold. Now, the sheepfold uh, is a place of protection that the, the shepherd kind of watches over. And I want you to see the Lord Jesus warns them, not of sheep, but of sheep, supposedly people who care for the sheep, coming up the wrong way. Right. And why are they in there? They're, they're to consume. They're to lead people out. And a lot of people don't preach on this part. But what was the purpose of the shepherd? He led them out. Right. And that's what individuals want today. They want to lead God's people in a different, wrong direction. So, when, and he was really making this directly to the Jews, both sects of Jews that they weren't the right shepherd. Right. And that's a bitter pill to swallow. Yeah. Uh, that's what, uh, ultimately why they killed him. Right. And so we find then that he is giving them a very powerful message and one hard to swallow and one difficult to take in. Uh, the rest of that verse, but climb up, up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Now there, there's two things he names and first of all, a thief is when you steal something, things like this, and a robber is someone that captures money. And we will find out that really at the end of it all, that's why the Jews were concerned with, they didn't want their money back to end. They weren't accepting, if you can say it that way, they didn't want to recognize Christ because they knew then the gig would be up. And they would no longer be able to collect money. They would no longer be able to live off the uh, live off the temple. And they wanted to stop him. Those are robbers. Those are individuals that take things from God's people. And he was telling them pretty directly, "That's who you are." Yeah. Verse two. But he that entereth in by the door 
is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, very important, two, two individuals that are named here. Number one, the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the second group, the sheep. Now, what you have to understand, not everybody's a sheep, right. and no one goes from being a sheep uh, being a goat and becoming a sheep. That's foolish. You know what? We live in a day and age where people try to say, uh, to change their gender, but uh, and I do think it's a swipe at the Word of God. I think that's where that whole origin comes from. But you know what? What I have seen in individuals like that, if they don't take all their drugs and, 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 and do all their therapy they're supposed to, they'll start being a man again. They'll start being a woman again because you know what? That's how God created them. Yeah. Deep inside, that's who they are. Right. So there is a difference between sheep and everything Amen. else. And he says, I'm the shepherd to those people. Not to everyone, but I'm a shepherd to those individuals. Verse 3, to him, meaning the shepherd, to him the porter openeth. Now, this is just my own idea, and, and you can take it for what it's worth. The porter is a protector. The porter is a door watcher. So in representations, as we see the shepherd as unto Christ, this porter is either the Holy Ghost or God the Father. Because he identifies him, he understands who he does, and he only opens to that individual. He don't open to everybody. He opens to the shepherd. And you know what? The Holy Ghost don't come by anybody that's not his. Yeah. That's why the, the gospel is rich to us and why it's foolishness to others. You're right. Because the Holy Ghost has to make that reality known to those that belong to him. Right. And so this porter is opening the door for the person of Christ. To the porter, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. Right. Not, not everyone, yep. just the sheep. You know, one of the glories that God uh, gives me whenever I begin to really see the doctrines of grace now 20 years plus ago is it didn't depend on me to talk somebody into something that was an established fact. Right. I didn't have to convince nobody of Amen. nothing because that's the work of the Holy yes. Ghost and I'll give that to Him and I'll preach the glorious gospel of Christ. And that is who gets it is the sheep. And listen, when people blaspheme the name of God, you know what? They're just showing their self for who they are. You know, I read about um, this uh, guy. He was a Satanist, essentially, or an, uh, someone that didn't even uh, believe that God was real. And he would blaspheme the name of God and dare God to kill him. Now, you know why God didn't strike him dead? He wasn't a sheep. He, 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 he goes, um, remember, he says, I don't even, at the end of the day, I don't even know you. Yeah. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Right. Now, it doesn't mean he wasn't aware of them because he's, he's God. He knows everything. But he didn't know him like he does me. And that is the difference. And so we find that the, uh, the Lord's people will respond. It may be in time, but he, those individuals will <laughs> respond. Now notice this, he says, He calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Now, this is another thing people kind of get wrong. Why would he lead him out of a safe place? The sheepfold is, is, is a walled thing, and it's very safe. Well, I'll tell you why you learn to depend on him. Yeah. A shepherd is somebody you depend on. Will you go through trials? You bet. Will you go through hardship? You know it. Will you get into risky situation? Absolutely. But you know what? You have someone you can depend on. And you know what? When that time comes, you know where he takes us back to? The sheepfold. Right. Where we have that walled city where right. nobody can hurt us, nobody can bother us. Yeah. But we learn by experience. We learn by 
uh, going through those events in our life and we come out of the on the other side a better Christian than we went in, we learn to trust him. Verse 4, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. Now listen, church, if you don't have the leadership of God, you stay put. And you know how you're going to know if you have the leadership of the Almighty? He'll be out there in front and you'll be following Amen. Him. Uh, listen, don't ever put the cart before the horse. Amen. I've seen a lot of miserable failures in my ministry because someone, and sometimes even myself, got the cart before the horse. And you know what it was? I wasn't following Christ. I was following my own ideas, my own objectives. And God wasn't within a thousand miles of it. And that's a very difficult thing sometimes. And so be a follower. A good sheep is a follower. And they get behind their shepherd because we know he knows exactly what's best for us. Yeah. <clears throat> also, I want you to see the end of verse 4 says they know his voice. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's an examination each and every one of you ought to do tonight. Do you know the voice of the Almighty? David did, did he not? Tom, you know, he said, you come to speak, you come to speak, me in, speak to me in the nighttime. Just still. Remember, uh, remember the Lord came to see Paul too. He said on the next night, it wasn't right away. I, I really believe he spent a night with nobody. But on the next night, Christ shows up and says, listen, you're going to preach down at Rome. Amen. Yeah. It's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. And so we find, we find then that understanding that sweet, wonderful voice of God through the person of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know what? I think you're a stranger if you don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I think that you're uh, a fake if you don't understand and know that's truth. Verse 5, and a stranger, they, meaning the sheep, they, uh, will they not follow? Now listen, all of you that have been here for a while, you think everybody, every family that's come and gone in the last 20 years of New Testament Baptist Church, if they were all still with us, we'd have to build on to this end of the building. We can't go that way because we'll be in the roadway, right? We can go back that way. And you know, you know why that has been? I can't come to any other conclusion. They left for a reason. Because see, God's people want to be where they be fed. They don't want Sunday school. They don't want some way lofty and big. They just, you, you, you know what? Uh, the horse likes there at home growing. He kind of puts his nose up at hay, but he will eat it. But you know what? I bet if we put down some biscuits, he wouldn't even know what to do with them, would he? See, you feed on the basics. You feed on the Word of God. And so, when they depart, well, what do you tell the church? If the unbelieving depart, let them depart. <laughs> In other words, don't you don't you beg them to stay? Don't you change your rules to include the crowd? If the unbelieving depart, just let them go. And I tell you what, if they belong to Christ, they'll come back unto Him. And, and so we find then that there is a barometer, there's a measure of there where you're at. And the stranger they will not follow, but will flee from Him, for they know not the voice. of of strangers. So, you know, you know what it ought to be, and I'll talk to them. Uh, just say when the Russellites show up. I, I won't validate them call, calling them Jehovah's Witnesses because they're not. They don't speak of the things of Jehovah. When they show up, they are false prophets and they don't have good food for you. And they won't follow the, the Word of God. Do I put it in the gospel? I'm sure. Do I think they're going to jump in? I doubt it sincerely. 
And, and so we find that those people are strangers. They're, they're not known of God. They're not known of us. And, and, and we should flee when that happens. That is the act. You know, we live in a day and age where everybody wants to be included. You know what? You take all the falsehoods that are out here today. Oh, we're just... You, you know, you heard that old stupid wagon wheel theory where we're all spokes and we're going to the same place. You know what that is? That's heresy, right? That, that, is, that is a horrible, horrible falsehood and nothing further from the truth could be. And you know what? I'm going to run from it. I, I, I'm not going to put validation on something that I know is not true. Yeah. And, and so we find then as the Lord's people... <coughs> Uh, that's a good measure of yourself if you want to hug up with something like that or not. Verse 6, this parable spake Jesus unto them. Again, a bunch of Pharisees and Sadducees. This parable spake, spake, this parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things which he spake unto them. Why didn't, he under, why didn't they understand it? Well, it seems hard and cruel, but he didn't want them to understand it. Right? You know who will understand this book and, and, and find it precious? The ones that God wants it to. And, and the others will not. And so, uh, verse 7, Then Jesus saith unto them, again, reiterating, tell them over again, Very, very, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door of the sheep. You know, uh, he's saying a mouthful in there because he's also saying this. I'm not the door for the goats. Mm -hmm. right. I'm, not, I'm not the alternate way to come in over the top of the, the ridge and come down in the fold. I'm not that. I am the door. Right. I want you to see it's singular. It's not plural. Right. I want you to say, he says, I am the door. He didn't say baptism was the door. Right. He didn't say the water was, yeah. was the door. Amen. What he said, I right. am the door. Amen. So the only thing I've come to, if you don't know him, you've not been through the door Amen. yet. Amen. You've not been through the door yet. Yeah. And, and so we find that Christ is very specific and says, this is who I am. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, stealing, wanting their own, but the sheep did not hear them. Now you think in the days of Jeremiah and Isaiah the prophet, listen, they were slim and few that would listen to them. When Ezra and Nehemiah went back to rebuild the temple, you know what? They didn't have a bunch of people follow them. They thought it couldn't be done. But you know what? The very ones that God wanted to help was in their hook, line, and center. You know, uh, when you're trying to serve the Lord out of your own energy, it will not last long. <coughs> because you can't do it. <coughs> Verse 9. Again, I am the door. Amen. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be Saved. You know, years ago, and I won't, y'all wouldn't know if I told you who it was, but um, I, I, I was a very new Christian, uh, probably about 12 or 13, fall year of my sixth grade, I guess, or seventh grade. And I asked the boy, Have you ever been saved? He literally didn't know what I was talking about. No. And today, a lot of times when you pose that question to others, Others, they'll come up with some crazy stuff, y'all. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been baptized. That's not what I asked you. I asked, have you been saved? And then you know what? I even get this today. Saved from what? Yeah. 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 Right. I'm like, I'm not throwing you a life preserver. I'm not talking about the Cumberland River. Have your soul been saved? And you know what? Don't get hung up on that. You're not, they're not being saved from hell. They're being saved from their self. Right. You're right. And, and, and so we find then uh, the Lord Jesus makes it amply clear that the, the lambs, the sheep, will be saved. And that will be a thrilling thing for us. 
uh, that we don't have to worry about is that he does the saving. Notice this, they shall, go, they shall go out, they shall go in and out and find pasture. You know what? We may leave the church and get out there in the world, but if we find some little scrap, well, we're going to feed on it. And you know what? When he calls us back to the sheepfold, we're back in there, and we get to enjoy his presence. You know what? He may send you out again. And I'm not talking about getting out of the will of God. I'm telling you about going on a mission. And say, you know, you need to get out. And you need to spread your wings. And you need to tell others about Christ. And then you'll come back. Not leaving Christ. Just getting out there and doing His bidding. And I also want you to see this. He makes it very, very clear that sheep come back. <coughs> sheep come back. You know what? Goats don't. Yeah. We had a goat one time. Or was it sheep? I can't remember. Uh, I think it was a goat. <laughs> and it went over the hill to the road Matthew and Dessa live on now. And, and some woman thought it was a gift of God and kept it and nurtured it. And, and we, we felt so bad about it, we didn't want to take it back. So we give it to her. Uh, and I, I, again, I think it was a milk goat. I can't remember. It's been so long. But you see what I'm saying? He left home because he wasn't the right thing. And that's what that's what often is done. Now Don's gonna remind me of what animal that was. Uh, so we see sheep act like sheep and other stuff act like other stuff. The thief cometh not but to steal and kill and destroy. I am come that they might, that they might have life and that they have it, may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. Now, listen, he ain't saying good like I'm a good person. You know what a good shepherd does? He keeps people safe. He, he, he keeps the, the sheep within the pen. He keeps the sheep and he fights off the beast. And when, you know what a, a good shepherd does when they're rebellious and they won't stay with them? He'll break their legs and put them up on his shoulders for a while and carry them around because they're a rebellious. Not a rebellious goat. They're a rebellious sheep. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I've had my spiritual legs cracked a couple of times, and it's not pleasant. That's right. But you know what? I know I'm his. <coughs> because he don't do that to the goats. He does that to the sheep. And so we find then that the Lord Jesus is making some very real and enduring promises to those that he loves. <coughs> now, I want you to, uh, if you will, drop down verse 11 with me. I mean, I'm sorry, verse uh, verse 18. Verse 18 uh, says, No man taketh it from me, meaning his life, but I lay it down of myself, and I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Now, drop down to verse 25. And Jesus answered, I told you, meaning the Jews, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not. Why? Because you are not of my sheep. Now, again, I'm not saying names. I don't know his soul situation. Uh, that's water under the bridge. But I have a virtual little time to tell me. Well, I believe everybody has an opportunity. And I said, what are you talking for that? Well, that's just what I believe. That's what I've been always told. And I said, you better check that out. Yeah. But to see, that's not true. That, that, that is not correct. You know, that's the gracious thing about salvation. Not everybody has that opportunity. Not everybody's given that grace. Not everybody is given the wonderful gift of faith, and then we take it so much for granted yeah. and, and just use it for nothing. But he says, huh, you're not my sheep. There are individuals out there that just don't belong unto Christ. But you believe not because you're not of my sheep, as I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Right. Very simple, isn't it? You know why some people 
the day you go into church, and I use that word very loosely, and it sounds like a rock concert from the 80s, it's enticing to the flesh, and they do not follow them. They do not, they're not following the master. See, the master will never lead you toward lead you towards sin. He'll always lead you toward goodness. He'll always lead you toward closeness. So anything that leads us from the true person of Christ, you can mark it down. That's not what you need. Right. If it's enticing to the flesh, I'd be willing to bet you it's not of God. And so we find then that the Lord Jesus makes it very clear there are sheep, and the sheep will follow him. Yeah. They will follow him in his ways. They will follow him in his words. They will rejoice at what he does. That's the sheep. And an old goat will walk. And be mad at it, and run against the and run against the gold, and never ever be happy in a true church because they do they're not genetically built for it. Then notice he says, "And I give unto them the sheep only, and I give unto them eternal life. Amen. They shall never perish." You talk about the security of the believer. If I was still able, I'd do a cartwheel down this center aisle. Because listen, that's a promise. Right. Listen, for the sheep, eternal life. And you know what? For the goats, eternal death. Amen. Amen. You ever saw how sinful people uh, cannot be satisfied? If they're rich, they want more. Right. And you know what? The best, uh, the best example I find in the Bible is the rich man that cried out to Lazarus. Mm -hmm. He still thought he was better mm -hmm. than Lazarus. Mm -hmm. He still thought that Lazarus was under his feet. You go get your friend. You send Lazarus. He's a servant anyway. See, hell had not changed his nature in the least bit. <coughs> he was still wicked. Yeah. He, he still thought he was better than everybody else. That is a goat. And you know what? When they're cast alive into hell, They'll still not be satisfied and probably be blaming something else, someone else, because it sure ain't their fault, right? Yeah. And, and, and so we find then that sheep are always sheep. They cannot be anything else. They are who they are. And everybody else is everybody. <laughs> They're dictated. They are living the life that they that dictates them. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. What a wonderful, wonderful truth. You know, we're in his hand, and Satan, and the enemy, and the forces of hell cannot pull us out. Amen. What, what, a, what a wonderful, glorious truth. I can't imagine the misery some denominations live in, thinking at any time they could do something foolish enough to fall out of the hands of the Almighty. Listen, I wouldn't sleep a wink. I couldn't relax. And you know what I want? So I wonder sometimes I want them to drink and carry on what they do. Uh, they probably need it to calm their nerves. <laughs> right? And so we find then that God's people are sheep. And we rest in the sweet, precious hands of Amen. our Savior. You don't have to worry about anything. Verse 29. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful, wonderful, rich truth. That's what I give you sleeping time when everybody else is up there. Yeah. That's uh, why you can relax. Praise God. When literally the world's falling apart around you. Um, that's why there's ease at night. Um, we can't praise Him enough. For that type of redemption, we cannot praise Him enough. To hear sheep tonight, we will be able to lift our voice and say, Blessed is to be the name of the Lord. And because He made us that way. So, well, Brother Larry, I'm not sure. You know, this is the thing about sheep. 
You know why they followed their master? Why they followed their shepherd? It's because they love him. They love him. They know he's a provider. They love him because he he's going to lead them in a safe way. They love him. And that's the best advice I can give to you tonight. A good, a good checkup for yourself. Do you love the master? Or is it just something in the back of your mind? When you love somebody to die in your life. <coughs> I've been looking at her a long time. And supposedly she has me. And that's why we can look over each other's faults. I can laugh at her and she can laugh at me even when we're alone. See, the Lord loves us, does he not? Now he looks over a whole lot in me.